Thank you, Senior, for the kind introduction. Good afternoon to all. Uh, happy to see you again. Uh, today, we are going to learn about lymphedema. We all know that lymphedema. Uh, so, this is uh, related to lymphatic symptom. Let me share my screen first. So, <clears throat> Before uh, moving on to the lymphedema uh, management uh, part, uh, we need to uh, just recap our uh, anatomy and physiology like lymphatic system. Uh, we all know that uh, lymphatic throughout the lymph lymphatic system, it flows, uh, lymphatic flows. It's called lymph. Okay. So lymphatic system is a part of circulatory system. Let's see one by one. So what is lymph? Can anybody say what is lymph? You can put your answer in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and talk. What is lymph? Anybody? So connective tissue. I'm asking, asking what is lymph? So body fluid. Thank you. So body fluid helping to uh, protect our body from some other infections like uh, that is a, that's called immuno. Uh, okay. Protect our immune system. Okay. Thank you. So that is one of the major functions of lymphatic system. So colorless white uh, blood cells. Sorry. I mean, colorless white blood cells. Uh, okay, I'll come to that. Okay. Uh, thank you for your answers. Uh, so lymphatic uh, lymph is a tissue fluid. Okay. Or an interstitial fluid is collected through the lymphatic capillaries. Okay. So, then enters into the lymphatic vessels to lymph nodes. It contains protein, lipids and water. So, this is called lymph. Okay. This fluid is running through the, throughout the lymphatic system. Okay. What are the functions of lymphatic system? As Reniwa Mam said, one is uh, the immune response that is one of the major uh, functions of lymphatic system so another uh, two uh, functions uh, one is reabsorb excess interstitial fluid okay wherever the interstitial fluid or a tissue fluid virgins the lymphatic capillaries will be absorbed from the uh, the interstitial space so that is why they uh, that then it goes to the lymphatic vessels and it goes to lymph, lymph nodes and then finally it uh, connected into the circulatory system. So that is why the maintenance of the uh, fluid and electrolyte balance will be maintained well. So reabsorb excess interstitial fluid is one of the major lymph, uh, functions of lymphatic system. The second function is transport dietary lipids. Okay. So the second major function is transport dietary lipids. So in addition to absorb lymphatic fluids, uh, it, uh, uh, in a small intestine, uh, they, uh, we uh, know that they will uh, transport dietary lipids also. And also, uh, as Nam said, uh, lymphocyte development and the immune response is the, uh, the third major functions of lymphatic system. If there is any problem into the lymphatic system develop, these all things will be affected. Okay, so that is why I uh, highlighted these um, functions of lymphatic system in the uh, beginning. So this is our systemic circulation. We all know that, isn't it? 
so our upper respiratory uh, that uh, upper part of the body so there is a the or the arterial uh, capillary arteries and uh, arteries and venous uh, capillaries are there here uh, upper part of the body the deoxygenated blood of the upper part of the body will carry the superior vena cava and the lower part of the body uh, deoxygenated blood will carry uh, the inferior vena cava so you can see that uh, uh, blue color uh, that uh, blood vessels no so this is deoxygenated blood what happened from the right atrium that it goes to then it goes to right ventricle then it that blood that deoxygenated blood will enter into the right and left lungs so when the deoxygenated blood is going to the lungs what happens so there is a communication between the arteries and capillary the uh, venous capillaries and the arterial capillaries are two okay here you can see there is a communication between the venous capillaries and the arterial capillaries at the same same thing is happening in the upper part of the body and the lower part of the body okay so there is a communication between the arterial capillaries and the venous capillaries before we uh, learning what is lymphedema we should know where is the lymph origin uh, and how the lymph flows and what are the uh, the uh, the step by step the pathophysiology of uh, originating lymphatic flow these all things we should know okay so here there is a connection between the communication between the arterial capillaries and the venous capillaries here also lungs also it's the same way and the upper part of the body is also same way. so here you can see the whenever the arterial capillaries and the venous capillaries are communicating together there is a fluid like material materials leak out into the interstitial space so that fluid is called lymphatic fluid okay whenever the arterial capillaries and the venous capillaries are communicating together so there is a fluid like material will be leaking out into the lymphatic the interstitial space that fluid will be absorbed with the, with the help of a lymphatic capillaries lymphatic capillaries okay so the lymphatic capillaries absorb the lymphatic fluid from the interstitial space and then it goes to the lymphatic vessels and then it goes to the lymph, lymph nodes again lymphatic vessels finally it goes to the subclavian vein okay so this is the uh, this this is the way the lymphatic fluids will origin okay so there is a connection in between the industry uh, the arterial capillaries and the venous capillaries together that time there is chance of fluid leakage into the interstitial space so that fluid is called lymphatic fluid that fluid will be absorbed with the help of a lymphatic capillaries okay let's see what is lymphatic capillaries so it has a blind edge single layer of overlapping endothelial cells you can see this here is a overlapping endothelial cells more permeable than that of blood capillaries so this is more permeable wherever the lymphatic fluids origin that fluid will be easily absorbed with the help of a lymphatic capillaries because this is more permeable and also it has a blind edge coming to the lactates again i already said one major function is transport dietary liquids here just to see in our small intestine we have a special type of lymphatic capillaries called lactates okay so these lactates pick up the interstitial fluid 
and also it can uh, absorb the dietary liquids and lipid soluble vitamins okay so that's that that is why we call it as chyl because this uh, area uh, the lymphatic fluids uh, look like a milky color so uh, that is why we call chyl coming to the lymphatic system works so now we understand what is lymph what is systemic circulation how the lymphatic uh, fluid origin and the ways to uh, go into the circulation all these things we learned now we uh, are going to learn about how the lymphatic system works Where, wherever the lymphatic fluid is origin the lymphatic capillaries will be absorbed so the lymphatic system circulates circulate protein rich lymphatic fluids okay uh, throughout the lymphatic system the lymphatic fluids contain protein rich lymphatic fluid so it collects bacteria virus and waste product this is very very important wherever the lymphatic fluids the interstitial space the fluid will be uh, that originated so that time the lymphatic capillaries will be absorbed okay because uh, but the lymphatic capillaries doesn't know whether the lymphatic fluid has any bacteria virus or waste products so after that what happened then the lymphatic system carries these through the lymphatic vessels okay so after absorption that fluid will goes to the lymphatic lymph vessels then it goes to lymph nodes so when the lymphatic fluid goes to the lymph nodes what happened the lymph nodes will filter out the harmful substance from the lymphatic fluid this is very very important so the lymph the major function of lymph node is it it is it has filter out harmful substance from the lymph fluid then the next step is the waste was flushed from the body and clean lymphatic fluids drains to into the blood stream so this is how the lymphatic system works okay if there is any problem into the lymphatic system uh there then these all things will be affected so this is the pathophysiology lymphatic from the interstitial space the lymphatic capillaries will be absorbing the uh, lymphatic fluids it goes to the lymphatic vessels and then it goes to the lymph nodes for filtering out harmful substance then again it goes to the lymphatic vessels and then lymphatic trunk then collecting that time subclavian then finally in uh, that drain into the subclavian vein so that is why uh, we uh, call this system is also is a part of uh, circulatory system okay so uh, throughout the lymphatic system uh, the lymph nodes are situated because it's uh, it's around 600 to 700 lymph nodes in our body okay in between the lymphatic lymph nodes and lymphatic vessels uh, it will be there for filtering out harmful substances so coming to the lymphedema so uh, now we learned about the anatomy and physiology of lymphatic system now we need to understand that what is lymphedema so lymphedema is a pathological accumulation of protein rich lymphatic fluid into the interstitial tissue due to an imbalance between the interstitial fluid production and transport wherever the arterial capillaries and the venous capillaries are communicating together there will be a chance of oozing out of lymphatic fluid okay so the production is there but if there is any damage into the lymphatic system develop 
there is a chance of accumulation of protein rich fluid into that area that is called lymphedema okay so lymphedema is a pathological accumulation of protein rich lymphatic fluid in the interstitial space due to an imbalance between the production and transport coming to the classification there are two major classification the first one is primary congenital lymphatic dysplasia because uh, from the birth itself there is a malformation of lymphatic uh, system that is primary secondary is anatomical obliteration of lymphatic system so again the secondary divided into two non malignant and malignant so non malignant is is the uh, sometimes is a major road traffic accident that time there is a chance of lymph node damage so that time the patients can develop lymphedema gradually and infections recurrent infections like cellulitis hydrogenic surgery and radiotherapy so these all things will be affecting the uh, patient's lymph nodes so these kind of these type of uh, uh, the, the problem develop the patients uh, might be develop uh, lymphedema gradually and malignant is primary lymphomas and then secondary recurrence so this is the classification of lymphedema let's see how to diagnose lymphedema the first and most important thing is you have to take a proper history you have to do the proper history and make sure that whether there is any unknown cause whether there is any disease related or trauma related is there any major road traffic accidents happens that all things you have to uh, look into and then treatment history also like chemotherapy or radiotherapy that kind of things or uh, that uh, treatment recurrent treatment for Uh, like infections of uh, cellulitis these kind of things will be affecting uh, the patient okay so when we take a proper history we should know the cause of developing edema so this is the history taking is very very important so after that you have to take uh, do the clinical examination so why i am mentioning the history is very very important this Uh, because if the the patient is having renal problem that patients can develop lower leg edema and if the patient is having cardiac problem that patients can also can develop lower leg edema so these kind of things will be there so that is why we need to take a proper history after that then you can do the clinical examination so this is the stage 1 lymphedema the pitting edema test like a orange peel skin so this is the stage 1 lymphedema if you apply pressure on that part your finger pressure uh, point will be seeing there so this is stage 1 the stage 2 is the tissues have become fibrotic hardened and the tissues are no longer soft so this is second stage and the third stage is the tissues are considerably hard and cartilage formation and creases will be creases will be developed so this is the stages of lymphedema i uh, now we are going to learn about stemmer sign so only one sign which we have seen in lymphedema patient is stemmer sign so for a healthy person we can able to fold the skin you can able to lift up the base of the second toe or a middle finger but in in if the patient is having lymphedema there you are not able to uh, that the fold you can not able to lift up the base of the second toe skin okay and also for the upper arm you are not able to fold up the skin of the proximal phalanx of second the uh, middle finger so this is you can see this okay this is how we uh, assess whether the patient is having lymphedema or the stemmer sign is positive or 
not. So you have to take a proper history and along with that you can do the clinical examination and this is the only one sign which we have seen in lymphedema patient. This is how the, we evaluated the patient is having, that the patient is having stemma sign presence or not. Other diagnostic methodologies are soft tissue imagining, MRI or CT. Uh, then you can able to determine the extra fluid volume. Then lymph vessel imagining, you can able to detect the abnormalities. And then bioimpedance spectroscopy, you can measure the interstitial fluid volume. So these all things uh, in palliative care, we are not uh, doing these kind of tests. Uh, because the uh, our patients are not affordable and the another uh, thing is no need to do this kind of uh, that uh, diagnostic procedures because uh, as i mentioned earlier uh, there are three two major classification primary and secondary if the patient is if the there is a uh, that uh, congenital abnormality is there, then you have to do this kind of test because we need to identify uh, how much extra fluid volume is there, is there any abnormalities, that all things we should know because we need to treat them. Uh, so because it's a congenital abnormality is there, uh, we definitely we need to treat the patient. Here also we need to treat them, but we don't need no need to do this kind of uh, test but because we already from the history and if uh, from the clinical examination uh, that part we should know whether the patient is having lymphedema or not okay coming to the problems so uh, just imagine your one finger one limb is normal and the another limb is huge. Though day by day, the limb size is enlarged. One limb size is enlarged because of the fluid volume. How much pain and discomfort will be there? You can just put yourself into their sh shoes. Always you have to remember on a uh, lymphedema patient. So whenever you have to, see, you have seen a lymphedema patient, you have to put yourself into their shoes first. You have to do the proper assessment with an empathetic way because they have a lot of pain. They have a lot of discomfort because of the fluid uh, that uh, this, uh, the lymph enlargement because of the fluid load and tightness will be there. Heaviness will be there because they are not able to lift their uh, limbs because of the heaviness. Uh, and fatigue will be there. Numbness will be there. Even they are not able to move independently. Uh, mobility will be impaired and loss of function. They are not able to do their normal function. So this is all things will be affected the patient physically. So these are the physical problems. Coming to the psychosocial problems, body image. So if one limb is enlarged, nobody is willing to expose that limb to others because they always, you can just think about a lymphedema patient. Whenever I have seen a lymphedema patient, they already covered uh, their limbs with a, uh, the, uh, the stall or shawl, something like that. So they don't want to expose their limp, uh, the uh, lymphedema and uh, others. So that body image will be affecting the patient emotionally. Loss of independence. They always depend on others. Loss or change of employment. Because, because of this problem, they are not able to continue their job. Gradually, their job will be lost. And then difficulty in wearing clothes and shoes. So they are not able to, because one limb is normal and the another one is big. They are not able to wear the clothes and the ready-made clothes and shoes. This will be affecting the patient emotionally and anxiety, depression. So, and also social isolation. Uh, sometimes maybe uh, misconception of disease. 
because uh, my disease, this kind of disease will be spreading to others. That kind of things, thoughts will be there. The relatives and neighbors are not willing to uh, uh, that visit these kind of pa uh, patients. So these things will be affecting the patient socially and emotionally and also constant remainder of disease. So we all know that uh, when we do the uh, mastectomy time, so if you do the like uh, CA breast patient, uh, after uh, diagnosing, uh, definitely they will be, uh, they, the surgeon will do the mastectomy procedure. If we do the total mastectomy, we will uh, remove the uh, breast and the adjacent lymph nodes. So uh, we will uh, try to uh, prevent the occurrence of spreading of disease to other parts of the body. So uh, that is why uh, we remove the adjacent lymph nodes. Because of that, the patients might, that patient might have uh, developed lymphedema gradually. But the patient doesn't know because of the lymphatic system is not there, the lymphedema develops. So if the patient is Devel have uh, will be developing lymphedema, they might be thinking like, okay, my disease is spreading to my hands too. So these kind of things will be there. Whenever you have seen these kind of patients, you have to make sure that you have to tell them that how to develop lymphedema and why the patient, that particular patient has developed lymphedema. So you have to convey the truth to the patient. Coming to the management part, uh, there are four principles of management. One is skin care. You have to educate the patient well about skin care because there is a chance of cellulitis developed on that area because there is a, uh, the lymphatic system uh, will be affecting the lymph node is not there. Uh, if the lymph node is there, they, that lymph node will uh, filter out, try to filter out harmful substance from the lymphatic fluids, but there is no lymph node into the axilla, so there is a chance of developing cellulitis. So you have to educate the patient well about skin care first. And the second thing is massage. You can, uh, there are two ways of uh, types of massage. One is manual lymphatic drainage and the another one is simple lymphatic drainage. The manual lymphatic drainage will be done by a trained professional. But the simple lymphatic drainage, you can train the patient and the caregivers for uh, doing the management. So that is simple lymphatic drainage. Let's see one by one. And the third one is compression bandaging. After massaging, you can do the compression bandaging and then you can do the exercise. So these are the three, four way of principles of management of lymphedema. And the fifth one is intermittent pneumatic compression pump. So for the step stage one lymphedema uh, there, then you can use intermittent lymph, uh, pneumatic compression pump. Uh, so I'll come to later that intermittent pneumatic compression. Before uh, moving to the management part, so now we learned about the ways to the four principles of lymphatic uh, lymphedema management. Here, uh, before doing the lymphedema massage, you have to take a measurement. When we do the take uh, measurement, you have to take a uh, affected and non-affected lymph measurement. We need to uh, differentiate how uh, that uh, the affected and no, no, that how much fluid load is there in affected and not affected. So that that we need to do the proper. Uh, measurement because non-affected and affected limb you have to take it and for the upper limb you can see that picture from the ulna tip of the ulna then plus two centimeter then every four centimeter okay so here you can see that head of ulna you can see the head of ulna. Here, this is a head of ulna plus two centimeter, then every four centimeter. You can mark first and then you can take a circumference. For the lower limbs, the same thing. So, from the angle plus two centimeter, then every four centimeter. Coming to the skin care, 
uh, always you have to educate the patient about pro maintaining proper skin care. Apply simple moisturizing cream. So uh, this is uh, very, very important. You have to tell them uh, uh, about the skin. Uh, so if there is a dry skin there, there is a chance of uh, that uh, cracking. So we have to prevent that in between, not just before massaging, after bath, they can use a uh, simple moisturizing cream. And meticulous drying between the digits because in between the digits is cleaning is very, very important because of the edema, there is a chance of accumulation of dirt in between the digits. If you are not cleaning properly, might be developing fungal, fungal infection. That is also important. Then avoid injections, venipuncture, avoid roses. So these all things. If you do, if you take an injection into the uh, that limb, that particular uh, affected area, sometimes it won't uh, have any problem, but sometimes it will be developed cellulitis. So better you don't touch that affected lymphedema area, lymphedema hand. Avoid ingestion and sand penny puncture and avoid roses, avoid blood pressure cuffs and also uh, avoid injury. Okay, if, if there is any uh, any injury happened, ask them to keep the area clean and dry. Then also you have to tell them to uh, avoid to carry heavy things. If they uh, take heavy weights into their affected limb, what happened? Circulation will be increasing. If the circulation is in increasing, there will be uh, there is a chance of oozing of the fluid. So maybe like uh, developing a lot of lymphatic lymphedema in that area. And also, if the any injury happened, if there is any signs and symptoms of infection, like inflammation develop, uh, they have to uh, go to the doctor and to, uh, take uh, antibiotics for that particular problem. Coming to the massage, uh, as I mentioned earlier, manual lymphatic drainage and the simple lymphatic drainage, always you have to take a deep breathing exercise uh, beginning and then you can stimulate the superficial lymph node. We have a video on uh, that uh, part, so I will show you later. Uh, so stimulate the superficial lymph node, example, neck, axilla, groin, and uh, stimulate the unaffected lymph node, like uh, where... Uh, uh, so wherever the superficial uh, uh, lymph node is there, you are if they are if you are able to stimulate it, you can able to stimulate it, especially upper part. Then stimulate the unaffected node. Then massage the proximal. You have to clean the uh, clear the proximal part and then go to the distal part. Okay. So this is uh, how we do the massage. Uh, always you can use gentle pressure. If you give a more pressure on that area, there is a chance of increase, increasing circulation because for uh, preventing um, yeah, that uh, pressure sore development, we used to, to give good massage. For uh, there, our aim is to improve the circulation. Here, if you improve the circulation, what happened? Again, the lymphatic fluids will origin uh, the form more and then the patient's uh, the lymphedema will be enlarged. So the use general pressure, your general pressure is enough to move the fluid from one part to another. So so man, for the manual lymphatic, if you do the manual lymphatic drainage there, you can do the, uh, you can apply general pressure. Okay. Some contraindications is uh, acute cellulitis. If they, if they have a uh, acute cellulitis there, you can give Course of antibiotics and make sure that the patient is not having any cellulitis and then you can do the management. Then renal failure. So here also, if there is a renal failure there, that there is a chance of fluid overload and unstable hypertension, severe cardiac insufficiency. These all things will be affecting. The, if you do the uh, lymphedema massage, that you are going to push the fluid, affected side fluid to the non-affected side. Okay. So there is a chance of fluid overload. If the patient's health condition is so not okay, then you not doing uh, these kind of procedures. And superior vena cava obstruction uh, and ascites. These kind of uh, problems there, better you don't 
gives a lymphedema massage. So I'll show you a video uh, first and then. I hope uh, that video is uh, clear to everyone. Uh, you all understand well about uh, lymphatic drainage. It has been, uh, should be done by a, a trained uh, uh, nurse or a physiotherapist or a doctor. We need to uh, uh, do the procedure in proper way because we know how much pressure is applied for that affected lymph. Uh, if you teach the caregivers, they doesn't know how much pressure is applied on that. They apply too much pressure on that area. It will be affecting uh, the patient a lot because again, the, there is a chance of uh, the ed edema level will increase. After uh, massaging, you can do the bandaging. So uh, usually uh, we start with a spiral bandage. Uh, so, uh, after spiral bandage, uh, we leave the patient one week and we uh, do the bandage, we train the patient uh, how to uh, do the bandaging because uh, when they go home, they have to do uh, themselves. We, we usually train, the, train one of the caregivers uh, for bandaging. So, after one week, uh, one week uh, they need to uh, for, do the follow-up. So that time we will uh, reassess the patient and uh, assess uh, and observe whether the patient is able to tolerate the spiral bandage. Then uh, if they are able to tolerate the spiral bandage, then we move on to the figure of eight bandage. So that is multi-layer bandaging. So that uh, if you apply more pressure on that area, that multiple layer on that area, that fluid, excess fluid will move from one area to another area. Okay. So after that, you can hear this same procedure for uh, legs also, the same thing. You can do the uh, spiral bandage first and then uh, leave the patient one week and then you can reassess after one week. If they are tolerated, then you can move on to the multi-layer bandage. So one more video is there. I'll show that video also. Uh, Ma'am, not audible voice. Sorry, sorry. So, uh, before, uh, after bandaging, uh, you have to do the uh, exercise. That is very, very important because our aim is to uh, move the fluid from one area, the affected area to the non-affected area. Uh, if you uh, do, if, you are, if the patient is not able to do the exercise, you can encourage the caregivers to do uh, for the patient because uh, uh, after bandaging, if you do the exercise, definitely the fluid will move up. So uh, that after bandaging is also important. After bandaging only, they can do the exercise. If they are not doing bandaging, uh, if, the, if the exercise 
can cause again develop edema. So uh, that is also important. This is uh, intermittent uh, pneumatic compression pump. Uh, here, uh, this is uh, uh, these kind of uh, uh, the garments, the plastic garments, these kind of things will be there. Uh, I don't know how many of you have seen this before. Uh, so uh, here uh, we have uh, seen uh, this uh, intermittent pneumatic compression pump. We can able to set the pressure uh, within the machine and then duration also you can set. After that, you can insert uh, the affected limb into that uh, garment and like a BP uh, pressure cuff. Uh, and then that uh, machine will give a continuous pressure. If the patient is having stage one lymphedema, this, this will be helpful for that. So there are two, uh, two major complications of lymphedema. One is cellulitis and the another one is lymphoria. Uh, so cellulitis is, uh, is acute inflammation. Here uh, uh, you can see that uh, changes of skin also, color uh, uh, that uh, red color will be there and the heat uh, swelling will be there and uh, heat will be there, warmth will be there and then uh, pain will be there. These all things will be there. These are the signs and symptoms of inflammation. If these signs are there, you suspect the uh, cellulitis and you, you refer the patient to the physician and uh, uh, ask uh, encourage the patient to take a uh, course of antibiotics for that. So do you, if the patient is having cellulitis, you don't do any management of lymphedema. And uh, the second uh, complication is lymphoria. Lymphoria is leakage of lymph uh, from the lymphedema area. So that time what you can do is you can apply, you can uh, put on a dressing pad on that area, then you can apply crepe uh, bandage so that all excess fluids will dry out. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Any, any? Ma'am, ma ma how many times we have to continue the massage when the patient is complaining lymphedema? Yeah. So yeah, if you do the uh, manual lymphatic drainage uh, as okay. a trainer, you can do uh, once daily. Uh, it will uh, take uh, one and a half hours, nearly one hour. Uh, you can okay. do the uh, massage only once a day. Uh, and then you can uh, do the bandaging and the next... Bandaging, bandaging, then we can remove the daily, we have to remove the bandage. Yes, in between, you can remove the bandage and then uh, if you within the hospital, we all there, we can do the uh, do the rebandaging again. But okay. when they go home, you have to train the caregivers. They yes. don't uh, touch the uh, that uh, affected area. Yes, I know, you know that. For uh, for the uh, uh, affected limb, the trained person only touch. Okay. Okay. If, if, if the cellulitis is there, what shall we do? No, no, no. You can do the antibiotics management. You the, you can give uh, antibiotics for that patient. Make sure that that cellulitis is uh, completely gone and then you can do the management. So okay. if, in, in, if the patient is having cellulitis there, definitely pain will be there. A uh, lot of problems will be there that okay. time. You don't do any lipidema management. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, we have a video uh, on manual lymphatic drainage, but uh, it, uh, we are uh, making this video for NHSRC. Uh, they are planning to upload uh, this video into their YouTube channel. We are waiting for that. After that, uh, uh, we will be able to share it with you all. So otherwise, copyright issue will be there. So that is why we are not able to share it with you now. Uh, okay. Any any other questions? So if time permits, I'll uh, show uh, one more video. Uh, that is uh, the simple lymphatic drainage. Uh, so now we move on to the case presentation. Lakshmi, it's over to you. Good afternoon to all. 
I am Lakshmi Vikram. Today I go through my case presentation. Next. My patient is 47 years female. Diagnosis breast cancer related lymphedema in left ear. Next. Presenting complaints. 47 years female have complaints of swelling, heaviness, tightness, firmness, complaints of pain, numbness, tingling, stiffness, lymph fatigue, weakness. Impaired mobility of shoulder, arm, elbow, wrist, and fingers. Next. History of illness. 47 years old female felt a dull pain in her armpit and the infralateral portion of her left breast as well as tenderness in the nipple area. She had a mammogram and was diagnosed with stage 2 breast cancer. She had a radical mastectomy and axillary lymph node dissection. She had 21 cycles of chemotherapy. She noticed heaviness and swelling in her left arm in the last three months after radiotherapy. But she didn't concern it. It leads to stage 2 lymphedema. Next. Examination. Patient conscious and oriented. Vital signs are stable. Temperature 98.4 degree Fahrenheit. Pulse 76 beats per minute. Respiration 28 breaths per minute, then BP 130 80 mm of HG. On observation, was providing an increase in lymph size based on her condition. Posture, she had developed a forward head neck. Skin was firm and scar on the mastectomy line was visible. On palpation, she was found to have pitting edema, a stage 2 lymphedema. The stimulus time cannot pinch the skin of dorsum of hand. Motor assessment revealed normal tone and reduced range of motion in affected arm. Respiratory system, no cough, dyspnea, or wheezing. The cardiovascular system, no palpitation, no complaints of chest pain. Gastrointestinal system, no abdominal pain. Nervous system, no headache, dizziness. Then urinary system, no complaints. Next. Treatment and significant investigation. CBC, HB 10.2 gram per DL, platelet 3.6 lakhs per microliter, serum creatinine 1.9 mg per DL, urea 32 mg per DL, serum sodium 136 mg per liter, serum potassium 3.4 mmol per liter, then RB 136 mg per DL, ESR 47 mm per hour. Treatment, decongestive lymphatic therapy and exercise. Next, psychosocial aspect. Patient is conscious and oriented. She is a married, living with her family, including her husband and two children. Her husband is a businessman in UA, but due to this condition, he had settled with his family. So the family facing so many financial crises. Her husband and children are anxious about disease condition. She belongs to Hindu religion. She is unable to celebrate festivals and visit friends. Next. Then medication, tap tamoxifen 20 mg BD, tap ketoprofen 70 mg BD, tap pandosid 40 mg BD, tap amoxicillin 500 mg TTS. Next. Main concern, pain, skin care, diet, exercise, anxiety, financial crisis, family support. Next. Summary, patient have breast cancer related lymphedema where she was stage zero post-treatment. Changes were slow and gradual as reported. Patient which she took lightly and didn't report to medical professional. No investigation was followed. After that, it leads to stage two lymphedema. Now the patient is suffering with swelling, heaviness, shyness, firmness, and pain. Now the patient and family anxious about disease condition. Next, the discussion points. Has the patient with stage two lymphedema how to give care at home, how to take care of her skin and other physical problems, then what all can be done for this family and, and her family. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lakshmi, for the wonderful presentation, for bringing out uh, this excellent patient story for uh, uh, today. Uh, so, uh, Thank you, ma'am.
as i always said uh, if anybody is have any uh, need any clarification regarding this patient story please ask her otherwise we can move on to the discussion points i think uh, the case presentation is clear to everyone we can move on to the discussion points so i would like to hear from you all i already taken the lymphedema uh, class now so now you all uh, get an idea about lymphedema management or uh, from that point of view you can just imagine this patient and then you can put your thoughts you can you can share your thoughts about this patient management so uh, as i always said uh, kindly switch on your videos uh, i want to see you all uh, and also i would like to know why you are uh, uh, switch off your video and uh, listen the class so i want to see your lovely faces uh, but you all, you all switch off your video and uh, listen my class that is not good so if i am able to see uh, this is not an on site training this is an online program if i at least if i am able to uh, see through online uh, that will be good for me too so thank you so we will do the discussion now uh, so this is a good patient story for uh, uh, discussion uh, we can uh, discuss Uh, Lakshmi is asking you ask the patient with stage two lymphedema how to give care at home. That is the first question. So before moving uh, to these uh, points, uh, I would like to uh, uh, highlight the main concerns. Please move move on to the main concerns. Please the slides. Yes, thank you. Uh, this is the uh, main uh, concern of the patient: pain, skin care, diet, exercise, anxiety, financial crisis, families. These are the main concerns. We need to give some solution for these today to Sister Lakshmi for helping this patient. Okay, so. Uh, any any suggestion i need to hear hear from you all please unmute yourself and talk i am a nurse only not a doctor no please unmute yourself and talk we all nurses don't hesitate first one is pain okay uh, we can manage by analgesic analgesics to give the patient okay Then, Uh, thank you uh, lakshmi uh, so i would uh, again i am asking what where is the pain what kind of pain what is the pain score that all things i need to know about pain management in my patient case she have pain with numbness okay where i uh, in the affected arm affected arm okay is there any any pain medication ketoprofen ketoprofen what is that it's a, a pain medication ibuprofen no ibuprofen ah same this ah <laughs> ibuprofen <laughs> maybe ibuprofen. i don't know your pronunciation <laughs> maybe no <laughs> oh ibuprofen right the train name another ah yeah i i had <laughs> yes this class is there that medication which class ibuprofen it is an nsaid nsaid okay uh, how uh, how many days the patient is on uh, nsaid madam actually the patient uh, stop all these medications then go for a traditional treatment okay Uh, the family and the patient is wish to go for a tradition a treatment that is um, nityananda treatment oh, okay, okay. Uh, i uh, when I, uh, that i take this case presentation not a hospital 
uh, settings because I am not working now. Okay. So uh, she is uh, my friend relative. Okay. Uh, the, uh, no, no uh, issue. No issue. No issue. Okay. So anyway, it's a good patient for a uh, discussion. Uh, for pain, uh, how will you manage? You have to take a proper history. You have to take, take a proper assessment. How will you do the pain assessment? According to the pain score, an RS. Okay, then how will you do the pain assessment? No scale, numerical scale. Pain scale. That is that is only for the severity of pain. Okay. Then ask. What all things you will assess for pain? First, facial assessment, facial expression. Let me, you can wait. Others will tell. That's all. Onset of pain. On palpation. Hmm? I think we have learned pain in the third session. Second session onwards. Now? Palpation. Now? You forgot PQRST. Yes. PQRST. Yes. Okay. Mild to moderate. Uh, no, no, no. PQ. Always you can do the pain assessment. You have to apply PQRST. the PQRST. Uh, P -Q yeah. Provocative. Non pharmacological and pharmacological measures. We have to um, use both uh, pharmacological and non pharmacological measures. Yes. After yes. the score. Yeah. You can uh, management uh, part, you can do the non-pharmacological management and uh, pharmacological management. But for the assessment part, you have to do the PQRST. Yes. What is P? Provo is there any, you have to identify, is there any provocating factor or is there any pro palliative factor? Q, what is the quality of pain? Quality. Quality. And quantity. What is R? Uh, radiation. Uh, radiation. That particular pain is radiating to radiation. other part. So that the radiation. And then? Treatment. Yes, severity. severity. How will you assess the severity? Yes, Zero yes, to severity. Uh, numerical pain rating scale. 0 to 10 scale. Then T is temporal factors. Okay. So this is how we would usually do the pain assessment. Better you can do the pain assessment and then after the pain assessment, you will get an idea about the pain score and all. Then based on the score, you can do the management. You can try non-pharmacological management and also pharmacological management. Okay. So uh, here you can do uh, the uh, assessment, proper assessment of pain and then you can do the management uh, as per the WHO analgesic ladder. Then... Coming to the skin care, we already learned what are the things you have to tell the patient about skin care. Please share one by one. If you have seen a patient with lymphedema, what all points you should tell to the patient and caregiver? To keep the skin in a good condition. Keep your skin clean. Sorry? Keep, you, keep your skin clean, madam. Okay, First. keep the skin clean. Okay, then. Any other moisturizer? See, apply simple moisturizing agent. Then. Providing powder. Uh, providing powder. Suhani? Providing, providing. Providing, ma'am. Providing. For what? For what, uh, Suhani, you will apply powder by powder? Prevention of infection. Prevention of? No. Uh, no need to apply any uh, uh, that uh, uh, powder or any uh, antibiotic cream to that skin. 
uh, you apply only the uh, simple moisturizing cream because this liquid is the ferropin sorry applied for, applied for liquid ferropin liquid paraffin any simple moisturizing agent is good if liquid paraffin is not available you can tell the patient to apply coconut oil so that is also good uh, okay. and uh, then uh, as one of you mentioned uh, uh, you can uh, keep that area skin clean uh, in between the digits there is a, a chance of dirt accumulated in between the digits if the dirt is accumulated there is a chance of fungal infection so in between the digits also important and also other points important points not use uh, loose cloth ma'am use or uh, loose loose uh, clothes okay that is good then madam massaging gentle massaging okay for a trained professionals you can do the massaging but you uh, you should not tell the patient and caregivers to do the massage on the affected limb then, Exercise. Okay, man, for bath, ma'am. Exercises. Checking. Uh, exercise. That is that is the management. Of, that is the principles of management of limb edema. I am asking you, how? What are the points you should tell the patient and the caregivers about skin care? Checking the skin uh, for redness or any. Okay, uh, check the skin for it's infection. Signs and symptoms. Signs and symptoms of infection. That is. Very good then. K M N for soaking, ma'am. For what, ma'am? Pre prevent itching, ma'am. Uh, you uh, so what I haven't you? seen I haven't seen any uh, uh, problem like itching for a lymphedema patients. I don't know how many of you uh, have uh, seen uh, maybe experienced these kind of problems. In cellulitis patient, ma'am. Um, can we for cellulitis for cell oh. here i am talking about cell uh, uh, the lymphedema patient skin care lymphedema no infection nothing only okay. lymphedema positioning ma'am elevation no okay after bandaging you can exercise you can uh, encourage the patient elevate the uh, limb that is okay do you uh, do you take in, uh, injections on that affected limb do you, do, you give, do you give injection to the lymphedema hand? No, no ma'am. No. No, ma then no. you have to tell the key patient about that. Wherever they go, going, that maybe they will be going to the local hospital for uh, yes. taking maybe injections. So the yes. nurses doesn't know uh, uh, whether the patient is having lymphedema or not. You have, they have to tell them, I am having lymphedema. Then, man, hmm. I would explain cold and hot. Okay. okay. Then, if they are if they are using gardening, maybe if they are playing uh, like uh, if they are doing garden works and all that, uh, there is a chance of mosquito. Uh, affecting and so uh, if the mosquitoes uh, uh, that uh, bite there is a chance of uh, cellulitis so if they are uh, working with the uh, that uh, garden they can be a, some mosquito repellent or they can apply some uh, or that uh, cream or something like that so that also you have to tell them if there is a chance of sign uh, sign the infections like uh, signs and symptoms of infection there they have to take some antibiotics for that that's about skin care. What about diet? No dietary restriction. No dietary restrictions. Whatever they want, they can take. No dietary restriction for this patient. Excesses, you have to encourage the patient. Anxiety. Why this patient is anxiety? Why this patient is ha having anxious? So that, that part you have to identify. Why they are anxious? Because maybe because they might be thinking like, okay, because of my disease spreading to my hand also. If the patient is developing lymphedema, they might be thinking like constant remainder of disease is also there. So you have to identify the uh, cause of anxiety and then you can give some uh, psychological support and you can give, uh, pro give a proper education to the patient. So that's how we can uh, reduce the anxiety.
then financial crisis definitely you can uh, connect with an ngo uh, like uh, maybe uh, we are in pallium india uh, we are providing all uh, thread bandages all lymphedema management uh, things free of cost so uh, the in uh, these kind of organization nearby there you can refer the patient to them so they will support them okay so and also family support uh, Uh, definitely this patient need a, a good patient a family support because we need to train the caregivers for uh, uh, applying bandages and all so because uh, we uh, without them we can't do anything so uh, we need to listen their worries uh, you can give psychological support to the patient and family to uh, identify their thoughts and uh, uh, you have to listen their emotions to Uh, then you can uh, treat them well. So as a whole, uh, we from the beginning itself we learned uh, palliative care is uh, for patient and their family. So always remember the patient's family concerns too. Okay, if the if one person develop uh, disease in a family, the whole family will be affecting, right? So these these things you always remember. Okay, whenever you treat uh, these kind of patients, you have to. Uh, if time permits, at least you listen. Give uh, at a uh, few minutes time to the caregivers too. You have to listen their worries too, so that we can able to uh, treat well. Please move on to the discussion points. So coming to the discussion points, uh, the uh, first question is: Ask the patient with stage two lymphedema how to give care at home. I think uh, Lashmi got an idea uh, now uh, for the stage two lymphedema. You can uh, educate the patient uh, about uh, uh, super uh, deep breathing exercise uh, and uh, superficial lymph node stimulation, and then you can apply bandages. They can uh, apply bandages, and then they can do the exercise too. After that, they can take a deep breathing exercise. That way, we can able to. Manage in the patient at home. Okay, so uh, but at the same time you uh, should tell them uh, about the skin care. So that is very very important. Uh, so uh, the second question is how to take care of her skin and other phys uh, physical problems. We already discussed the skin care. You have to educate the patient well uh, how to maintain a, uh, maintain the skin, especially the affected limb. Uh, is very very important. There is a chance of cellulitis uh, development, so you have to tell them uh, clearly. And uh, uh, the third question is, what all can be done for this patient and her family? Uh, always uh, you can uh, do something for this family. You, you uh, for this family because uh, the lymphedema uh, will be affecting the patient a lot. At the same time, it will be affecting the family too. You have to. Uh, listen their problems first, and then uh, hear that based on their problems, try to solve their problems. Uh, anybody uh, wants to add any points? So I will uh, show you that video uh, on lymph simple lymphatic drainage, and then we'll finish. I think uh, this video uh, clear to everyone. Uh, you already uh, had a good idea about this uh, lymphedema management. Now, now is clear to everyone. Uh, anybody have any last minute question? Uh, if you don't have any question, uh, we can wind up this uh, session. Uh, thank you all for joining uh, today's session. Thank you. Thank you for uh, uh, sharing your thoughts and suggestions. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you all for joining us for today's session. Thank you so much.